Ryan. Even though we're no longer tied to just basketball, there's some big basketball news going on in the offseason. We'll start with uh, Mr. Triple Double. Russell Westbrook splitting with his longtime agent Thad Foucher recently, who had represented him since he entered the NBA in 2008. And over that period of time, they were actually considered one of the stronger player-agent relationships in the league. But Foucher came out, got ahead of the story, and citing irreconcilable differences, indicating that Westbrook would like to move on from Los Angeles despite the lack of trade market for him. And he had a whole bunch of stuff coming out in a statement that ESPN released uh, last week with the possibility of a fourth trade in four years and talking about the marketplace or lack thereof for Westbrook. And it's just we're seeing all this drama LeBron talking about after the Drew League appearance about having that win or bust mentality and it seems like he's taking pot shots at the Laker organization at his Laker teammates for not having that same mentality that he has and then the new news that came out today about an hour before we jumped on to do this show is that apparently Westbrook LeBron and AD sat down to talk and confess their love to each other and confess that they're gonna they're gonna work at it and make it work no matter what this season what you taking away from all of this nonsense i think you might have ad-libbed that last (laughs) part a little bit i don't know what to take away with it take away from it because i don't know that russell westbrook has any value to any team that he's on whether it's the lakers or charlotte who he's been getting connected to the knicks the nets that he would go to in like a Kyrie Irving trade I really have no idea because when he went to the Lakers it seemed like a basketball fit just wasn't there anyway because he's gonna he's not gonna play off ball from LeBron and LeBron's certainly not gonna play off ball to him so it was always a strange fit a season couldn't have gone worse for the Lakers last year and Westbrook was really the lightning rod of all the criticism that Lakers team took I mean, for a good reason too he's pretty bad certainly not the only problem with the lakers but he played really bad last year and it's gotten to a point for russell personally where i don't know that there's ever been a player of his caliber a future hall of famer a former mvp who's become the literal like laughing stock of the nba we've had players like iverson or even harden tracy mcgrady like guys who fell off but they were never just like the joke of the NBA or the laughing stock. Again, I know social media probably has a little bit more to do with it. Not as prevalent when Iverson was on his downturn. Not as prevalent when T-Mac was on his downturn. But even guys who get slandered today, whether it's Harden or Kyrie, guys who are on that Russell Westbrook level, it's not as bad as Russell Westbrook and that because they're not as bad as Russell Westbrook is as an NBA player. To the point where even you have what Jeremy Sohan, in the video they're playing like some quick word association game with them they're asking them the first thing that you think of when you think of this player russell westbrook he gets these a lot and the first thing he says is bricks and the answer was triple doubles but that just goes to show you what guys think around him about the league and this is a rookie saying that about a future hall of famer and that's not even just a one-off he's he wouldn't he for sure wouldn't be the only person saying that about russell westbrook of course all the fans have said it and now we talked about the nets and i thought the nets best option was to run it back i can't say the same for the lakers but i don't know what they do because russ has a huge contract are you going to buy him out of all that money and then where's he going to go who's going to pick him up i don't see anywhere where there's like a real basketball fit for him so it's more so can he adjust his role from what he's always been especially post kd where i'm just like this super high usage guy who's going to get all these stats regardless or not if it helps your team win this is crazy to me because we've been friends for years we've talked basketball for years i have always been one of the biggest defenders of russell westbrook you're talking about a guy who had back-to-back seasons averaging a triple double magic didn't do that lebron hasn't done that we're talking no one's done that since the big o Since Oscar Roberts, no one has averaged a triple-double, and Russell did it for two straight seasons. And you're telling me that there's no one that wants him. There's no one, there's no way he could help a team. This is a guy that is averaging over 10 assists and 10 rebounds a game, and he can't help a team because his outside shooting and inside shooting is not very good. (laughs) And that's all anyone looks at. You talked. You said it exactly. A rookie on the Spurs, the first thing he thinks of is bricks. It's not triple doubles, which Westbrook is absolutely known for and better at than anybody in the NBA. And that is a huge part of team basketball is corralling rebounds and dishing assists. And he is fantastic at it. But there's no marketplace for this man. It 
it's insane to me. Because he's not just bad at shooting, right? Like, he doesn't make the right basketball plays. I know he gets a bunch of assists, but he also takes a lot of shots that he shouldn't take, and he misses those, and then he turns the ball over a lot, too, and he doesn't give you anything on defense. So if he's just hoarding rebounds and assists, not that rebounds and assists aren't valuable, but if you're hoarding all of those and then you're just bad at everything else, it really diminishes the values, even of what those assists and those rebounds bring, because you could probably have eight more points as a basketball team, but Russell Westbrook is two less assists if he would just make the right play more often than not, and that doesn't happen. So overall, it's just hurting your team. So it comes down to Westbrook and his decision-making both on and off the court. But for this whole situation with his contract and if he's willing to accept the role that Darvin Ham has apparently laid out for him and his former agent brought this up as well when he was talking about the divorce from Westbrook is that he was all for it. He was trying to tell Westbrook, look, you've been traded four times in four years. Four times in four. You are a former MVP. <laughs> and you think that this is not the way things are going to go going forward, that you're just going to all of a sudden magically turn into a 55% shooter and that everyone's going to want you. You have to start making some, you know, some considerations to everything else involved in the game of basketball, the teams you're playing for, the players you're playing with. Look, I get it. When it happened, I, you and I were both on the same page. Why is Westbrook going to the Lakers? I know he is from L.A. and wants to be a Laker, but you already have LeBron there. So your facilitator is already there. I hate the way LeBron and his teams play basketball. I always have. It drives me nuts. Everyone stands around and waits for LeBron to do something. And so what you need for that are outside shooters, like a, oh, I don't know, a Buddy Heald who was initially the Lakers were going after. It didn't happen, and then they went to Westbrook. Westbrook's not a good outside shooter. It's not going to be a good fit. He needs the ball in his hand. LeBron needs the ball in his hand. It's not going to be a good fit. It's the same stuff they talked about when they were on the same team in Houston with Westbrook and Harden and CP3, and there's only one ball, and how are you going to make this work? So it's the same issue, different team, different teammates. I get him wanting to come home. I get him wanting to be a part of the team he rooted for growing up. But when you already have who is your guy and your facilitator in LeBron James. There's no reason to have Russell there, but he's here. It obviously didn't work last year. I don't think it's going to work this year, but what do you do when he is owed so much money because he signed such a ridiculous contract? I don't see how you make it work. I don't see it either, and LeBron's not absolved to blame here. He's the one who wanted Russell Westbrook there, even maybe even at the expense of Buddy Heald. There's a no, let's go get Westbrook instead. And it obviously has not worked out for him. The What seems like it'd be the simple move is you put Russell Westbrook on the bench, but Russell Westbrook doesn't want to come off the bench. And Darvin Ham, what, two weeks ago? And when he gave his support, I'm pretty sure he used the phrase, like, this is our starting point guard. This is the guy that we still want on our team. So it seems like the team doesn't have any interest in bringing him off the bench either, maybe because they know the relationship would be fractured. I know might be the reason. It's hard to believe that there's not some quality basketball left in Russell Westbrook still, but we mentioned it. He doesn't make any of his shots. He doesn't even make any of his free throws for a guy who can attack the rack like he does and takes as many shots inside and outside the arc as he does. When he gets a line, he's not making them, and when he's just shooting the ball regularly, he's not making them. So it's it's hard to play a guy like that, even if he's getting assists, even if he's getting rebounds because he shoots the ball so much. And so even if you have a guy like Ben Simmons, who famously doesn't shoot, he is giving you rebounds, he's giving you assists, and he's giving you all-world defense on top of that, and he's not shooting the ball. You might want him to shoot the ball a little bit more, but if he's going to go – two five or something it's still less detrimental less detrimental than russell westbrook going four of 18 and that's westbrook doesn't seem like he wants to cut down on his shots and maybe he maybe he does because what darvin ham also talked about was we need a guy who's going to set screens we need a guy who's going to cut and if russell westbrook can make those adjustments to his game that seems like something that could work the problem is I'm sure the past four coaches have told Russell Westbrook the exact same thing. Hey, you need to set these screens. Hey, you need to cut. Because the teams that he's been on, you look at right? He was with Houston. He wasn't the best player on Houston. That was James Harden when he was with OKC. Paul George had a top five, top three MVP year, whatever it was. Like, Paul George was the best player on that team. So all of these places Russell Westbrook has needed to adjust his game 
for it to work, and he just hasn't shown a propensity to do that. Will he do that now with Los Angeles? Maybe that was what the phone call was about. LeBron and AD trying to like plead to him to do that, but I don't have any faith that he's going to do that. If he does do that, sure, it can work. That's the that's the answer to how this can even remotely work is if Russell Westbrook changes his whole style of basketball that he's ever played. I just don't see that happening because this isn't the first year that like it's been an issue or that's even been requested. Right. We're talking about a guy who is 34 years old, so age-wise, he's not past his prime, but he's age-wise looking at the end of his prime. He averaged 18.5 points per game, which is the worst he's done since his second year in the NBA. But what you said makes absolute sense to me. If he is committed to, A, working on defense, B, shooting the ball less, and C, doing everything else he does so well when it comes to the assists, when it comes to the rebounds, when it comes to being aggressive in the right way. He's always been uber aggressive. He's had that little bit of Kobe in him where it's a little bit too aggressive sometimes, a little bit too angry. I personally enjoy watching it, but it doesn't mean it's the best thing for your team. And everything you've said about his past, it all adds up. He's never accepted he wasn't the best player. He's never accepted that. He didn't accept that at UCLA when he was playing with Kevin Love in the Bruins. He didn't accept that at OKC when he's playing with Kevin Durant. He didn't accept that in Houston when he's playing with CP3 or Harden or at the end of Kevin Durant when he left and Paul George came in. He's never accepted it. You'd think it'd be a little easier to accept with LeBron James on the team and Anthony Davis on the team. But he probably hasn't accepted it there either. And that's a mentality of a lot of athletes. Athletes coming in saying, I'm not going to believe anyone's better than me until they prove they're better than me. But at 34 years old, he's not old. He's still fast. He can still do a lot of things on the basketball court. He's not as fast, but he's still fast. (laughs) But he can still do a lot of things on the basketball court that can really help a team. If he can tone down the amount of shots he takes. Four for 18, like you said. If you turn that into four for 10, it's not a game killer. It's not something that's going to kill your team. Your team still has a chance right. to win the basketball game. If he can accept all these things, and that's the thing that his former agent brought out, is that it's it, he's hinted at Westbrook's lack of self-awareness regarding a situation that he hasn't accepted that his prime might be behind him. If this phone call accomplished that, if LeBron and AD saying, dude, we need you to play off the ball, to play defense, to facilitate more so than shoot. Look, if there's an opening to the rack, take it because you can still dunk fast, hard, and angry, and it's great to watch. But you're being left wide open on threes for a reason because <laughs> they're not expecting you to make it. <laughs> so start finding the guys who are – and this is the Lakers' fault also because they really haven't brought a lot along with this. You have these three guys – And who else? You got rid of all your shooters. You got rid of all your great young talent. That's what LeBron does when he comes to a team. You need to find these guys who are going to be this for you. And it just didn't work at all last year. And I don't know how running it back with the same unit, basically, is going to change things. But if Westbrook is able to accept that he needs to play a lesser role offensively offensively, and pick up a bigger role as a teammate, it might work. It it might. I'm not really hold him up. No, me though. neither. As a Laker fan, absolutely not. He'll have fun YouTube highlights to search up in five years look after yeah. he's retired. He'll be like, oh man, this is what Russell Westbrook was like. And it'll be a whole bunch of cool highlights. Oh, 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 oh,